The NASCAR Pinty Series has returned from the West and landed on the streets of Trois-Rivières. Round number nine of the 2017 championship takes place at North America's oldest street race. The drive for the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series championship is in full gear. Alex LeBay's consistency has him leading the challenge. While road course ace Kevin Lacroix looks to retake the lead he once owned. Now these four-wheeled Picassos look to outduel this tough street course in the heart of Quebec. The glory of calling oneself a winner of Trois-Rivier awaits one of these NASCAR drivers. We're just off the shores of the mighty St. Lawrence River in beautiful Trois-Rivières, Quebec, as we get ready for the Can-Am Le Sancon Tour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 48th edition of the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis as trackside. Adam, Dominic Fugere and his team know how to host an event. Dave, this is one of the premier motorsport stops on the Canadian calendar. Almost 50 years, people have flocked to this little city to watch spectacular racing. And this city definitely comes alive when this event comes to town. And it's the ninth stop in the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series calendar. And that man, Alex LeBay, currently on top of the point standings. LeBay holds a 10-point lead over Kevin Lacroix. These two drivers have traded the lead back and forth all year. Caden Lapsovich, DJ Kennington, and LP Dumoulin round out the top five. Well, those drivers are all in the hunt for a championship, and with five races to go, it is still anyone's championship to win. Yesterday, 20 cars took to the track, and it was Andrew Ranger took the E3 Spark Plug Pole Award with a time of 1 minute, 6.959 seconds. That's the Mopar Parts driver's 22nd career NASCAR pole. Earlier, Todd did his traditional Trois-Rivières Pinty's grid walk. It's a familiar sight here at Trois-Rivières. A huge crowd around Andrew Ranger on the pole for the fourth time and going for another victory. It's been a few years since you yes. were a winner here. Yeah, it's been a few years, so it's time uh, to win that race. And, uh, you know, I think definitely we have a, a very good car. The Mopar 27 has been fast. We have a little problem this morning, uh, yesterday in practice, but for qualifying, everything was really, really good. Have a great, great break and uh, hope everything goes well for us and uh, win another race here. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Andrew Ranger. Ranger going for another victory here at Trois Rivières. Starting alongside on the front row, Alex Tagliani in the number 18. This is a team that's battled some troubles this weekend. They replaced the master cylinders this morning. Mark Antoine Camberan also very fast at Icar. He finished second. He was quick in Toronto. And of course, the guy who has been sweeping victories here at Trois Rivières, that is Kevin Lacroix, going for three in a row, which would equal a record. Kevin, are you thinking about victory and maybe getting that third consecutive one? here at Trois Rivières? Well, uh, every time I come here, that's uh, that's a goal for sure. And also, uh, we need uh, the extra points of uh, winning for uh, the point standings. But, uh, you know, there's uh, three aggressive drivers out, uh, out front that are having not so much a good season. So they want for sure they want to win this race. So uh, they will uh, battle hard. So I'll try to keep my car clean. But uh, so the main goal is to keep the car clean. But for sure, I'm targeting the, the win. Good luck today. Thank you. Going to be fun to watch. Kevin Lacroix going for his third consecutive victory here at Trois-Rivières. Alongside in the third row, it's L.P. Dumoulin, who was a winner here at Trois-Rivières also, racing in front of the hometown crowd, former champion. He had his championship year. He was also victorious in Trois-Rivières. And now the man leading the point standings as we come into this event at Trois-Rivières. It is the uh, also very popular Alex LeBay, who has been super busy signing autographs. Alex, we talked a little bit earlier in the weekend. You're thinking about the points you're thinking about a victory in this race as well an important one for you and your sponsor yeah for sure i mean we're in trois rivière there's a lot of people as you can see and it's uh, the canam canam official race so it's going to be a uh Pretty exciting. We're starting six. I think we've got a really good car on race trim. I did, a little, I, did, I did a little mistake, I think, on my hop lap yesterday. Touched the wall on corner two um, uh, on the Apex. So uh, we, we left a little bit on the table. I think we've got a really good uh, car to race today. Good luck to you as well. Thanks. Alex LeBay, a lot of really fast cars up front here at Trois-Rivières. Going to be fun to watch when they cut them loose. Drivers are all buckled in. There's the CF-18 Hornets from the 425th Tactical Squadron from Bagotville, Quebec. Let's fire up the engines here in Trois-Rivières. Man, 
Is that one way to get you amped up for a NASCAR race here in 20? Pierre, the Jets, and now the motor's running as the entire field comes to life on the front straightaway. There is Mark Antoine Cameron. He's been so close this year. And what a huge entourage GM Paillet has brought to this event. We'll be on board with J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectre Premium 04. There's the number 25 of Simone Dion Vien. Big thumbs up from him as we take a look at the Spectra Premium starting lineup. Front row, Andrew Ranger and Alex Tagliani. That should be a shootout into corner number one. Row number two, there's Mark Antoine Cameron in the number 22, and Kevin Lacroix, second in points, coming to this one. Back in the third row, L.P. Dumoulin, the WeatherTech 47, and points leader, Alex LeBay. In row four, D.J. Kennington, a former winner here, and J.F. Dumoulin in the 04. Row number five has Anthony Simone driving the number 95. David Michaud back behind the wheel of the number 56. There's Gary Clute in the 59. Caden Lapsovich, your reigning series champion in the 76. Row number seven, Robin Buck in the 02, and Simone Dion Vienne in the 25 Castro entry. In the eighth row, we've got Adam Martin in the nine, Raymond Gay in the 20. Row number nine has Brandon White in the 99, and Justin Effecto in the number 77. And then up row number 10, Martin Cote in the 11, and Larry Jackson back in the number eight. And the weather's been all over the place this weekend, Dave, but how about a dip in the pool? Well, with the sunshine we've been seeing so far today, it would be a very refreshing dip for sure. Let's take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, Adam, and a 50-lap race today. 50 laps, they're still pushing it on fuel. You might see some conservative drivers towards the back get called in to top up with fuel. Other than that, it is a 50-lap sprint race. Let's head down pit side, check in with Todd one more time. Todd? Guys, something I'm keeping an eye on for this race, the action up front as soon as the green flag drops. Both pole sitter Andrew Ranger and Alex Tagliani are long shots at best for a championship. They both want to win. Alex has never won this race at Trois-Rivières. Andrew Ranger hasn't won since 2012. There has been some bad blood at times. Expect a lot of action today. What a great shot of Andrew Ranger. Pull the visor down. This is a critical moment in this race. It is a battle to turn one, Dave. No matter how experienced a driver you are, you still feel the butterflies in your chest as you come down out of the final corner, looking for the green flag at a place like Trois-Rivières, Quebec. Dennis Reed, the vice president of Parts and Centuries, clothing and customer service for BRP, gives it a wave and already smoke from the 18. Oh, tag over, shot the corner. He tried to win the battle. Instead, he's going to give up second as well to Cameron. Look at how tight they go through turn number three as they still jockey for position. And that's one where you've got to get down single file. You just can't race side by side through that corner, Dave. Tagliani under pressure now from the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Remember, Kevin Lacroix has won every single road and street race in the NASCAR Pinty Series so far this season. Look at the 95 way down to the inside, and the 25. Simone Dionfian caught Caden Lapsovich three wide, and he got the best of that transaction for the looks of it. Lapsovich loses a couple of spots. Now's the time, though, to give and take. If you see a driver taking a lot, it might be best to just give him that spot. You know, Dave, what we noticed in practice, if you have a fast car, that's great, but so does everybody else. The times are so very close. We're going to see people make aggressive moves right off the start and probably off any restart we might see today. Lap number one goes to the 27, the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. In tow, Mark Antoine Cameron in the Chevrolet. Another Dodge, the Lowe's EpiPen. Back number 18 of Alex Tagliani. That's your top three. There's a lot of horsepower under the hood of these NASCAR stock cars. Add to that the rough terrain of these streets that they race on. You really have to be focused getting up through the gears to not spin the tires. And you really have to be focused too under braking to not hop those tires if you downshift too quickly. That last corner was a spot that we normally see that happen. Everybody single file able to make it through there, no problem. You know what, Mark Antoine Cameron is really the calming factor in this top four. He's the one driver at the front of this pack who doesn't take a lot of chances. He just bides his time. And that's really breaking us up from, from the lightning and thunder we're going to see if Laquan, Tagliani, and Ranger really start to mix it up. Can-Am back Fusion of Alex 
LeBay. Important to note that the number 32 has never won on a road course. Alex LeBay still looking for his very first win on a tight, twisty track, just like this one. And in talking to Dave Jacobs and Mario Gosselin and LeBay this weekend, I don't think you can expect to watch them win this weekend either. They're here to survive. A top five would be good. A podium would be great. But they know they've got the points lead. They're the ones being chased. He can't take any chances. On board Mark Antoine Cameron as he goes up through the gears. Cameron with a couple starts already in 2017 behind the wheel of this number 22 and a couple of well, I was going to say nearly good finishes because in Toronto he's battling for the lead when unfortunately he caught the tire wall. So very fast. And we mentioned it earlier. The folks from GM Pae are out in force this weekend. Tons of shirts, tons of guests. They were having a blast yesterday, and there's even more of them here today to watch that man, Mark Antoine Cameron, in the 22. Good race there between LeBay and JM Dumoulin. Or LP Dumoulin, excuse me, in the WeatherTech Dodge. A hometown boy, the team based here in 20 year Quebec, so they'll love to put on a good show in front of the hometown crowd. And did you notice when we went on board with Cameron, did it seem like he was short shifting to you, maybe to save some fuel? Could very well be. You said there was going to be tight on fuel, especially if you get to that dreaded O word, overtime. That's exactly right. He grabbed those gears really quickly. That's what short shifting is. Don't let the engine really rev up. It makes you go a little bit slower, but it conserves fuel. JF Dumoulin is not short shifting. You let, you let the engine wind up, get all the power you can out of it, and if we get another ride in Cameron, we can try to show you the difference. Wow, he was letting that Spectra Premium Dodge breathe for sure, chasing LeBay and his brother, LP Dumoulin. There is Dave White on top of the box in the Mopar Dodge pit as Andrew Ranger continues to dominate here at the Grand Prix of 20 Fieri. He's led every lap so far in the early going. He has had a great deal of help with his bad luck as you see how hard he swung out of that corner. You can see the hump in that turn too. All the cars bouncing through there. This track is starting to show its age in some spots. Some areas have been patched in its brand new asphalt, but others a little bit rough in spots. And I hope they never fix it. <laughs> at all there. He kept his car tight coming off of that corner and look at the great run he got up on LP Dumoulin in the 47 and something we have not seen in two years is the 74 of Kevin Lacroix not contending for the lead. You're right as I mentioned off the top he's won every single road and street course race so far in this season. If you look back to last season Winning here at the GP3R was the time that started the streak on road and street courses for the 74. Everybody considered him a shoe-in, stopping here in 20 year. LeBay's got a great run. Poking to the inside of Dumoulin, down into the heaviest braking zone on the racetrack. He's going to make it work on the bottom if he can hold it through the corner. He's got position on the 47, and Dumoulin will give him space and drop in behind but give the spot to the Can-Am Ford Fusion. And at that point, Dave, all Dumoulin's trying to do is maintain his momentum so he doesn't lose any more. Once LeBay goes by, you, you really can't fight from the outside in that corner. And we talked about the points racing that the 32 was going to do here today. They're not going to make any crazy moves, any dive bomb kamikaze deals. And we got a problem on the racetrack, the number 20 of Gay is stopped up against the wall. No caution yet. We're staying on a green. No, he does a nice job of really keeping it off of that tire wall. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but when you can back away and drive, we'll have a look again. See, you have the choice at that point to either go through the runoff to the right or try to make the corner. At that point, he should have used the runoff. He tried to make the corner and just couldn't do it. You lock up those front tires and the car won't turn. And from St. Julie, Quebec kept it off the wall, which is the good news, and we stayed under green. So we're 12 laps in the books of a scheduled 50 here in the Can-Am 50 at the Grand Prix to 20 down. And here's our two points contenders. We're on board with the points leader, Alex LeBay, just in front of him. Kevin Lacroix was the point leader as we look back from his back bumper, but they're still angry over a penalty in Edmonton. Looking very 
very much at home. And let's just call that guy. Alex LeBay is smooth and fast. Kevin Lacroix is dynamic and fast. There's Marc Antoine Cameron, another smooth and fast. And there's Alex Tagliani in the 18, closing the gap on race leader Andrew Ranger. We can see the last lap. He was about two tenths of a second faster. That is big. He's dragging along Marc Antoine Cameron with him, too. Cameron has a couple things playing against him here in 20 Air Quebec. A, he drives the number 22. That car has never won on a road, road or street circuit. And a Chevrolet has never won here at 20 Air Quebec. That's a great statistic, Dave. Having said that, that's the best shot they've had. The 22, since Scott Steckley stepped out of his seat, I would say today is the best chance they have to get to victory lane. Wouldn't it be great to see Mark Antoine Cameron on the top step of the podium here in Trois-Rivières, Quebec. He's been so close so many times. He sat on the pole here back in 2014. Can he do it here today? See the top three. They are spreading a gap back to the fourth place car. That is Kevin Lacroix. The top three are setting stale, and you're right. That gap at the front is getting much smaller than it was. You know, two tenths of a second a lap doesn't sound like a lot, but that'll reel in, reel in, and then it'll be time to see if Tagliani can make a move on race leader Andrew Ranger. As we say that, there is some slower traffic. Raymond Gage just pulled into the pits. That's a break for Andrew Ranger, but there's more traffic to come. Just up ahead, too, you saw a flash of a black tail light, and that is the 11th car of Martin Cote, just a little bit off the pace in front of the leaders. There he is there as Andrew Ranger will be pressuring him very shortly. Oh, no, that's Brandon White, I should say, in the 99. Beautifully timed move by Ranger to swing to the side of Brandon White. I mean, White dropped an anchor there through turn one, gave the leaders plenty of room, but it still takes a lot of rhythm to do that without losing speed. Yeah, White not in a points battle, so he knows he doesn't want to mess up anybody's race. He saw the leaders coming through, pulls to the outside, very gentlemanly thing to do, and now he's back on the gas here down the back straightaway. And good leaps for cycling on the hood of the 99 car. Brandon White's just thrilled to be back at the racetrack. A lot of positive of energy down there as he uh, took a detour. He completely missed turn number five off into the runoff area. Well, we talked about earlier, it's an option you can do. And that's that's the choice you make when you realize he wasn't going to make the corner. Rather than crash the car amidst the leaders, take the runoff. And Andrew Ranger has company, and David Mee showed up against the concrete. I believe that's just exiting turn number three. Now you can see the waving blue flag. That is a local caution, now a full course caution. Here at 20 Pierre, Quebec, 16 laps down. What happened to Michaud? Wow! You cannot carry that much speed through that corner. I've got to think some sort of a failure on that 56 car, and he completely missed the tire barrier and stuffed it into the concrete. Yeah, that's going to be a hard lick. He's back to pick up the bumper cover. The driver is out and OK, which is the great news. He'll help in the cleanup. We'll take a quick break here on TSN with Andrew Ranger still out front here in the Can-Am 50. When you talk about the town and the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières, you need to speak about the Dumoulin brothers in the same breath. Both love to perform in front of their hometown crowd. And Dave, their hometown crowd absolutely adores the Dumoulin brothers. Right now, LP Dumoulin having a great run sitting in the fifth spot, while JF Dumoulin sits in seventh. And did you know, Dave, LP is in the top three for most top fives at this event. JF is in the top three for most top tens. And yesterday, Jason Best of Spectra Premium broke out the checkbook and handed over a sizable donation to the Quebec Cancer Society through Dumoulin Competition's efforts. They put a lot of effort into that program. The Dumoulin brothers are just, just a class act. Great people. Always smiling at the racetrack. Win, lose, or draw as we get set to go back to green. Restart number one, a back to work lap 20. Almost halfway through this Can-Ham 50 at Trois-Rivières, and Tagliani was catching Ranger for the last 10 or so laps. Looks like Ranger with the advantage into turn one. Great shots for our pilot. 
A Justin Sewell who flies high over the Grand Prix at 20. If you can see the cars weaving through turn number two headed for the Duplessis gates. This is where you can't race. You, you can ride side by side, but it is not a comfortable ride at all. And we can see them getting sorted out to try to get single file. So a little anxious moment there for your points leader. The number 32 of Alex LeBay had the 47 of LP Dumoulin right up alongside. They sorted it out back to single file. Great battle back there. GF Dumoulin is defending his turf going into that turn five. Simone trying to do it on the outside, but as we said before, really hard to make that move. Crossways for Simone as he got back on the gas as we ride on board the number 59 of Gary Clue. off a start in the Monster Energy Cup. One of the very few Canadians to get an opportunity to race. He made the start at Watkins Glen, New York. And he said he really enjoyed it. He's the type of driver who doesn't get that wound up about things. He says, you know what? I do notice these cars are fast, but they are not as fast as a Monster Energy Cup car. Says I feel this should make me better in this series. And his seat time is good seat time, especially when you're up against Bigger competition, too. When you have to race harder competition, you tend to better yourself. Look back to Alex LeBay, currently sits in fifth spot, but he's all the not by himself at all. The 59 of Clooney in 11th. He took a look underneath the Castrol Edge Dodge at DJ Kennington. He's got to be careful. DJ let him run his backup car in Saskatoon. You, you don't want to dive in there too deep. Now you look at the top three and then the rest of the field coming through. Top three all single file and staying straight through that corner. Everybody else just a little bit crooked as they went through that turn. Yeah, and you notice the differing styles. Ranger and Tagliani, they'll let their cars hang out a little bit. Cameron, who is right with them, will keep that thing straight as an arrow. That's how he likes to drive. There's so many different ways to go fast in this series, but you'll start to see it come lap 40, lap 45, as the tires are starting to wear out. Who's been able to conserve the most equipment? So close to that outside wall as you look for the apex in turn number three. Now back on the gas and down the back straightaway. Andrew Ranger pulling away from Tagliani since this resort. He hasn't opened a big gap, but he's definitely opened a little bit of comfort zone as there goes Caden Lasovic looking to the inside of Anthony Simone. Couldn't do it. He'll tuck back in line. He thought once and looked again, but the 76 wouldn't make it stick, so he decided better off to be following the 95 through that turn. Riding on board with Blut once again, Simone Dion and the Castrol Dodge just ahead. 11th spot for the 25. And there's Alex LeBay all over. We've seen him do that so many times. He comes off that corner tight to get a better run through here down the home straightaway into turn one. Call me shocked again that that 74 is that far back in the pack. And the 20 of Gay goes around once again. No caution. Oh, oh my Cote almost collects him, goes through the gas. But that was close. That, that's where you need better communication with your spotter. A spotter's got it. You've got eight lanes to the outside and a quarter of a lane to the inside. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. The corner worker didn't get clipped. And we keep going. <laughs> Stay under green. Still Andrew Ranger, your leader. Alex Dangley, any second spot. Mark Antoine Cameron. Third, you've got Lacroix and LeBay rounding out the top five. I'm a little surprised that Caden Lapsovich and DJ Kennington, I thought they would start to move forward a little bit. Oh, Alex LeBay had a run to the inside. You could see it towards the back of the screen. Watch him coming off this corner. They're side by side. Got a drag race, and now Lacroix has position on the inside. Smokes the tire as he locks up the brake. They make contact. That's a lot of contact. Lacroix into the wall. They are still not clear each other as we look back from the LeBay 32. See Dumoulin just hanging out there, and LeBay is going to back off a little bit into the turn. Lacroix thinks he has position. Here comes LeBay again. Oh, my goodness. That is not a place where you want to get wide on the racetrack. Lacroix grabbing a gear. Now LP Dumoulin squeezes the 74 into the pit. Well, they get squeezed together, and the 74 got the worst of that. I'm not sure if that hole was really there for 
Lacroix, and he is trying to fire the engine. That was the tightness of the Duplessis gates. Turn number three is where this is happening. Still just a local caution. And if you watch, it's not straight between two and three. The wall juts out. There's LeBay making contact with Lacroix. And then you could see the 47 of Dumoulin pop through. You might see the nose of his car. So there was the contact. You could see the car wiggle. There goes LeBay, LP Dumoulin. The wall narrows up. Yeah, Dumoulin. Dumoulin came up, but at that point, Lacroix has nothing to gain by staying there. You almost have to say, well, I lost that spot. Let's try to get it in the next corner. But Lacroix definitely paid the price. And look who has caught your race leader. The EpiPen Lowe's St. Hubert number 18 of Tagliani, and he's not going to wait. He goes to the inside to make a move, and he wow. will move to the top spot. There is no way Ranger could have thought that was coming. Alex Tagliani timed that perfectly, controlled the car down into the corner. The difference between that move there and what happened in Toronto, Tagliani got all the way to the front of the 27, so there was no doubt he was there. They're able to make it through the corner. Now let's talk about Toronto a little bit. There hasn't been any payback from Andrew Ranger for that move. Here is Tagliani, makes it stick, a great run out of the turn. And also, there's all that runoff room. So this time, there's a little bit of room to race. Look at Tagliani come off of this corner. Much, much wider. He's shake and bake, baby. <laughs> it's time to go. And he went. So Tagliani, your new race leader, probably a 0 2. As Robin the Olympic Leyland Ford Fusion comes to our slows, I should say, doesn't come to a rest. That is limping around the racetrack. He has not had a great weekend in that race car. I think there's one driver who was hoping for a little bit of rainfall. Yeah, Robin Buck is a win here in the past. He was looking for big things in good equipment, a car prepared by Mixed Motorsports. Unfortunately, today's just not going to be his day. And he has come to a stop. I'm not sure if there's runoff room there or not. No, we are under yellow. The yellow flag has flown. Dan Hawkins there waving the yellow over the field. So we're going to bunch this group up with 29 laps complete. And you can see the right front wheel of the 0-2 was all mangled, but did that happen before the tire went down or after the fact? But still, 0-2 stopped out on the racetrack. So we'll take a quick break here in 20 Pierre, Quebec. We have a new race leader, Alex Tagliani. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of 20 here. I'm Dave Bradley, along with the trackside voice of NASCAR in Canada, Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is in the pits. But pit road is busy. The 74, Kevin Lacroix is there. He's getting his right front fix, getting some body work fixed up too. Lots of bear bond being put on that 74 machine as Robin Buck gets the flat right front change on the Omvic Ford. Todd standing by with an interesting spectator, the oval driver of the 22. With Donald Teej, who will be back with us next week at Riverside. A little bit disappointed about Edmonton, but excited to get back into the car, I guess. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody talk about uh, that track over uh, at the Riverside. So uh, I can't wait to be there. And uh, I think we got a car to win. You know, we prove it at Edmonton. So I think we're going to be fast next week here, too. See you there. Thank you. Get set to go green, guys. He's another one of those drivers knocking on the door, looking for his first NASCAR Pinty Series victory. Victory. We head back to green with 32 laps complete of a scheduled 50. Tagliani and Ranger headed for turn one. Same battle side by side, although they've swapped lanes. Tagliani with a great start, and that'll have Cameron to the inside. Yeah, they're going to drag race into turn number two. Cameron will be on the outside. He thinks better of that. Found a hole down low. Boy, oh boy, they're stacked up from about fifth on back. Too wide down into the corner. You can't go too wide through. <laughs> between the 32 of LeBay and the 47 of Dumoulin. Now the two brothers Dumoulin nose to tail. This is going to affect the drivers further back, and they're starting to fan out. LP looks. There goes Simone and Lopsovich. They're three wide. Oh, and a hit. Simone going around. Dumoulin caught the rear of the number 95 innovative plumbing. Dodge Challenger and around went Anthony Simone. No caution yet. We stay in the green. I'm not sure if Lapsovich missed him or not. Their noses definitely touched while Simone was backing into the wall. He must have seen his light flash before his eyes. The driver, the 76, is his race nearly fell apart in an instant. Simone's race did, in fact, fall apart as he's resting up against the outside wall. And I haven't seen the 95 pull away from that spot yet as we ride on board Andrew Ranger. Ranger was 
pretty close to the 18 before that incident. Now a full course caution. Yellow flags being waved all around the racetrack. Let's have another look. Starts with a three wide. Yeah, further back at the top of the screen, Simone to the inside, Lapsovich to the outside. But there's so many bumps. Under braking, these cars are so unstable to begin with. Let's ride on board with JF Dumlin. Use that yellow line as a guide. I, he was running straight down that yellow line. I think Simone might not have realized they were three wide, so he expected another lane to be given to him. And Dumoulin was just heading into the corner, and Simone looking for that room. Caden Lapsovich up on the outside, got lucky there and missed it all. But we're under caution once again, and Tagliani still out in front. You're watching race number nine of a scheduled 13 of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2017 on your source for all things NASCAR in Canada, TSN. Headed for restart number three here on lap 38. Anthony Simone refired the car. He is at the back of the line there on the outside lane for this restart. Didn't even come down pit road. In 14th spot that last time they crossed the line. Tagliani, Ranger, and Cameron all single file headed for turn number three. Keaton Lassovich took a really wide swing there trying to get momentum as Tagliani leads by a car length. Once again, LeBay and Dumoulin side by side. LP and JF Dumoulin. One in front, one behind the 32 of Alex LeBay. The top three have already opened a gap on LP Dumoulin running in fourth. LeBay couldn't make a move. He'll be back in line. JF Dumoulin again defending the inside. And that car is at max capacity braking. He was wiggling down into the corner. Kate Lapsovich in the 76 is starting to get racy too. He's not far behind that battle. You'll see the nose of the red Dodge flash through your screen there as he puts a chase on. He's right behind the Spectra Premium 04 of JF Dumoulin. And how about that red race car, Kevin Lacroix in the 74 machine, climbing back towards the front. He didn't get much damage after that interaction, we'll call it, with the 47 of LP Dumoulin for turn number three. So that was the good news. So he still has a car to race here up through the field, and it seems to be working pretty well. Alex LeBay overshot turn one. You see J.F. Dumoulin, he got to the inside coming off the corner, but that puts him to the outside of turn number two, and that's not a fun place to be either. He'll fall back behind the 32 of LeBay. And we're getting down to the nitty-gritty in this race. 11 laps to go. That time past the stripe, so if you're going to make your move, you better make it soon. Yeah, it's time to go for all of these drivers. Tag me any. Not opening much of a gap, as here goes J.F. Dumoulin. Can't do it again. Battle for fifth spot. The Spectra Premium Dodge of J.F. Dumoulin chasing the 32 Can-Am Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay. And they run so close to the concrete. Use up all the asphalt they can, the bigger arc they can make of these corners, the more speed they can carry through. And you look at that, the chain from first all the way back to eighth, nobody is pulling away. We talked about the drivers having to preserve their tires, preserve their brakes, most importantly on these race cars too. On a tight street circuit like this, who has saved enough? This is where it will start to show. Kevin Lacroix down into turn one, all the way to the inside as he chases multiple time champion T.J. Kennington. And we should mention too, the 95 of Anthony Simone has pulled off. Looks like his race is done. He's down pit lane. Ah, uh, he was having a good run, got mixed up in that altercation. Another tough break for Simone in the 95. Look at the leaders though. Andrew Ranger taking a look on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Tuck it behind and follow him through this time. But here comes the 74. Lacroix shows a nose to the inside of Kennington. Sometimes even if you're not going to make the move, it's good to make them look into their mirror, maybe cause them to make a mistake. Saw Lacroix take a peek up to his rearview mirror a couple times as he battles hard with the Castrol Dodge of DJ Kennington. So important to be aware of your surroundings, what's in front of you, what's behind you, where the opportunities lie. DJ Kennington running a smooth line as we see it must have been Caden Lapsovich smoke one of his tires breaking into the corner. We've got 10 laps to go. Kennington not leaving the gaps open too much. Now he does going into turn number one. Give Lacroix the spot. I believe Lapsovich locked up a tire once again going into the corner. 
One driver who's out of this race, as we mentioned, the 95 of Anthony Simone, who was doing so well looking for that breakthrough moment. Unfortunately, it won't come here in the Grand Prix of 20th year. He's down pit lane. He's standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Yeah, the dejected Anthony Simone already out of the car. Looked like you were on your way to a pretty good day, but then it turned for you. Yeah, it's a uh, shame for everybody on the Innovative Plumbing team. Uh, what a great car we had today. We were up to seventh there, and uh, 04 took us out of the race. I think we broke the rear gear, just turned left into us. So, uh, payback's tough. So, we'll go get them next week. I don't, I don't think that's how that saying ends, Dave. This is huge. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix off the pace. Came into this one second in points, trailing the 32 of Alex LeBay by 10 markers. Not the day they wanted for sure. They needed to make up some points. Instead, it looks like they may go the other direction. I'm hearing over the radios he's having trouble with the transmission in the car. That is heartbreak for that team. And We'll have to talk to him after the race to find out if it might have been caused by that run in with a 47 down in turn number three, but it's got to be heartbreak for that team. They needed a good run here. Listen to those rumble strips and how they upset the car. You hit them, the RPMs go way up and you're not getting any traction. with Andrew Ranger and how's this for a record at the Grand Prix of 20 here he's won four of ten races held here the other six he's finished second amazing stat in 10 years he has never finished worse than second Robin Buck gets out of the way down to the inside four laps to go he'll pull back in front of the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron who's sitting in third spot the 02 of Robin Buck is laps down but he's in between that battle for second spot. Yeah, he popped back up into uh, the trouble with road racing. It, it's hard to get out of the way. The best thing you can do is run your line and let the others deal with it. That's what Robin Buck is doing. Cameron takes advantage, gets to the inside. LP will follow him through. LeBay probably as well. I think you'll see Buck No, he gets back up into the line just before JF gets through. But did you see what that did? He bunched all the cars in behind. Now three of them are all nose to tail. JF Dumoulin unfortunately got caught out by Buck merging back in in front of him. But at one point there was four all tight together. Well, and that, that's what happened to Ranger as well. Oh, and we are under yellow. It looks to be the 11 of Martin Cote stopped in turn 11. Just as we were approaching the white flag, there is the car stopped on the track. Boy, they were just approaching that white flag. Dave, NASCAR overtime coming up at the Grand Prix to 20 p.m. Setting up for an exciting finish here on TSN in the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're setting up for a green-white checker here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. The car's working out of the final turn onto the front straightaway. They'll see green this time as they pass the stripe. Tagliani launched quickly in that 18. Look at the advantage he has heading into turn one. That's exactly what the driver of the 18 needed to do. Now they stack up for second. Andrew Ranger with the position across the nose of Cameron. The top four have done a great job of getting themselves in order. Flute gets together with the 25 of Samuel Dion. They hang on to it to stay straight. Caden Lapsovich caught the wall. Wow, there was a lot of contact going on down into that corner. Everything seems to be sorted out. Everyone's making it through. DJ Kennington up alongside the 76. And now he'll tuck in behind. You see the 59 of Gary Clute wiggling under braking. There's Robin Buck. He got himself back on the lead lap with the free pass, trying to make the best of a tough day. Single file. Who is going to make the move first? Andrew Ranger is almost within striking distance of your race leader, but it is still the Lowe's Epi Ben Dodge of Alex Tagliani. Ranger driving the wheels off of that car, trying to make his move. Tagliani, he has not let up one bit. They're all right on the edge, Dave. Now, we haven't talked much about the history between these two as we see the white flag. One more lap here in the Grand Prix to 20 air, but Tagliani and Ranger do have a history dating back to Toronto. And for our avid NASCAR fans, the overtime line is the start-finish line. Basically, there is no overtime line. Now it's race to the end. On board, Mark Antoine Cameron, your third-place driver. He's got a great view 
for this battle, but he's just not able to close in. Andrew Ranger looks like he might be getting closer to the 18. Well, he's going to need to catch the trap. This is going to be his best opportunity to take over top spot. Right on the bumper is the Mopar Dodge. This is as close as Ranger has been in the second half of this race. He draws closer to Alex Tagliani. Deeper in the field, you see the 59 of Gary Clute battling with the 17 of DJ Kennington. A dice for eight spot. We're down to the final half lap of this event. Andrew Ranger, if he's got something, he's going to show it. Oh, and he slides it through that corner. I believe his opportunity is done if Tagliani can keep it clean. He was trying to dive it in there as hard as he possibly could. Unfortunately, lost grip of the Goodyear Eagle tires. This win will go to Alex Tagliani. Second to the 27 of Ranger. Cameron rounds it. The top three. LeBay with a solid top five run. J.F. Dumoulin in sixth. The team celebrates on pit road. Tagliani winning for the first time in 2017. We got issues here in turn number one. The nine of Adam Martin and the 77 of Jocelyn Fecto. And that is after the checkered flag. That is turn number one of the cool down lap. Big damage to the Johnsonville car and donuts for Tag. Tyler Casey is going to accept congratulations from the crew. What a big celebration day is and plenty of drama at the end. It's my dad's 65th birthday. Been away from him for 10 years doing this. This is a big one. This one's for him. Got to thank EpiPen, Lowe's, Spectre Premium, Cantorque. Uh, all our sponsors that help us out. These Quebec fans are the best. I wish we had them everywhere. Savor it and enjoy it. Thanks. An emotional Tyler Case. They have been through a lot this season. He deserves to be emotional after that win. We're headed to victory lane right after this. 43-year-old Alex Tagliani, a new member of the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame, has his sixth career NASCAR victory and flies the fleur de -lis proudly. And there are some words between Anthony Simone and the crew of J.F. Dumoulin. I'm not a great lip reader, Dave, but I think I got the gist of that. Tagliani with the win. LeBay, we mentioned fifth. How about Simone Dion Vienne in ninth and Larry Jackson in tenth? And let's head down to victory lane and talk to Tag. Alex, your team was the first here working on this car to get it ready this morning. I know how much you wanted to win this race. And tell me about that great pass that you made to get the lead. I, um, I, am, uh, I am so proud to be part of the 22 racing group. Um, uh, Scott, Tyler, you know, um, all the boys are putting so much effort uh, in this program. And uh, this weekend we had uh, Sylvain Prudhomme, CEO of Lowe's. Um, we had people from saint Hubert, uh, EpiPen, longtime partner, and Spectra Premium. And to win a race like this is, is humongous. And uh, now we're going to have to, I'm going to have to use Sylvain's helmet, and I'm going to have to have him before the race touch the car because it's been good luck for us. And I'm so proud for the guys. They work so hard and they deserve it. Alex Tagliani, winner at Trois Rivières. Yeah. First time winner in 2017, but look at the points. Big shakeup at the top. Big shakeup. Lacroix now 23 back, but look how tight it is for third. Lapsovich, Dumoulin, and Kennington in a tight battle for third through fifth. That's a lot of money at the end of the year. Todd's with your second place finisher. Andrew, you just said it. Another second. I know you wanted that victory really badly. A terrific run, though. That was a heck of a battle. It was a fantastic race for us. You know, we really work hard. All the Mopar team did a great job. And uh, I try, I try. One time, Alex was really, really fast. So he passed me the little corner right there. And uh, I, I was starting to feel that my pedal, my brake pedal, very, very soft. So I was worried about it. And uh, the last restart, I never start seriously. The wheel spin, and uh, I never, I never be able to catch him at the end. I passed close, but not enough. But anyway, another second place here, and uh, it's good for the team. So very happy for everybody. Second again for Andrew Ranger. His streak remains intact. See those full grandstands behind Andrew Ranger, and there he is, third place runner Mark Antoine Cameron, as he accepts his trophy. It was the move of the race that Tagliani put on Ranger, giving him a huge win in front of this great Quebec crowd. A great crowd it was, and Dominic Fougier, the promoter here at Trois Rivières, just handed our top three a giant Quebec flag to wave. Today's race on TSN has been brought to you by. Spectra Premium, automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. E3 spark plugs, born to burn. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube.
Dave, I think we should just keep heading east. Let's go to Antigonish, Nova Scotia for the next round of racing. The bumper to bumper 300 as we go back to the ovals. The champagne being sprayed as we say so long from Air, Quebec. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.